Hey guys, Jay Sensational here. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since we had a little bit of a you and me session talking about the deck. So today I am bringing you the top deck in the ladder right now. This is Annie Twisted Fate, a sort of side spin onto the Annie Ezreal deck that was so popular. And to be honest, the decks are very, very similar in speaking of both what they do, what kind of cards they have. But I think this Twisted Fate um, Bilgewater version is a little bit better equipped into the meta. So let's talk about why that is. In the meta right now, we have a lot of these go wide decks. We have like the Fizz Riven deck. We have the uh, Aphelios Winding Light deck. We have any sort of other sort of aggressively slanting tempo based board based deck. And what this deck does really well is it has a lot of ways in countering that, especially with cards like Make It Rain as well as Twisted Fate. Having the ability to ping three different units for one damage, pretty much nowadays right now, especially in the early game, can be very threatening board clear. Same with a Twisted Fate red card. It's just very, very good at slowing down your opponent's game plan, as well as sort of just stopping them from developing when they really want to be developing going wide on their turn. Um, in the uh, build drawer side of things, we also get to use utilize a lot more card draw, such as cards like Eye of Nakaboros, as well as Extra Savage. Noting we have seven cards that draw too, so we realistically never run out of value. And right now, something that I've also noticed is that some decks just don't have very good ways of killing Twisted Fate. So decks like the TF Nami, decks uh, I guess TF Nami has Vengeance and Crumble, so that's maybe not the best example, but decks like the fizz ribbon decks like the uh i don't know some decks out there <laughs> but I, I i forgot it i can't think of them off the top of my head but i managed to flip twisted fate in quite a few of the games that i will showcase in the video for you guys as well and so of course once twisted fate levels up it just becomes a really really big threat to your opponent and of course as a classic any sort of tempo based noxus deck we're utilizing a lot of the early game cards such as Annie, Blades Edge, Raven Bloom, uh, Conservatory, Ravenous Flock, Disintegrate, you name it. A lot of removal and a little bit of units. Very tempo based game plan. You want to utilize the flocks very aggressively, getting the House Fighters ship damage through, leveling the Annie for Tibbers, and just counting down the Raven Bloom Conservatory as best as you can. In alternate cases, we can level up Pusifate and also just take the game away from there. But just utilizing our early removal to work towards our uh, tie bulk off the conservatory in order to steamroll the tempo from the game plan on there. One question that I have been frequently getting on stream is why don't you run Riptide Rex or can you be putting Riptide Rex into this deck now that Riptide Rex did get buffed into seven cannon brushes? And to me, the answer is still no. It's a little bit awkward to play. The value that you get isn't very present unless you've played a tie bulk. Yes, it can maybe sometimes clear a board or two. But once you get tie bulk down and you just like play a two damage make it rain or like a two damage red card, you're almost getting a very similar sort of effect. And if you're only going face for it, it only deals like maybe like five or so. And for eight mana, I think it's just very, very clunky, especially you don't have any like burst ways of triggering the plunder. And if you have to make it rain into like Riptide Rex or something like that, um, its efficacy becomes a little bit worse as well. I just found it to be a little bit awkward at eight mana. It feels a little bit hard to play. And so for me, it doesn't remain in the deck. But overall, you just have a lot of draw and a lot of cheap cards. So that's what you should be cycling through and through. And once you hit the Raven Bloom Conservatory, your small units become pretty threatening anyways. So that's the deck. Check out the games I showcase for you guys. It's just another very tempo-based deck. And so feel, thank you guys so much for tuning to the channel. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely Saturday. And I will catch you guys tomorrow with another video. So peace out, guys. Take care. And I'll see you guys next time. There's a two-man challenge. Yeah, I love uh, the, the Flame Chomper. Who thinks he plays Fizz on turn one? <laughs> right. Oh, I hate this hand. I don't want any of it. Okay, this hand also sucks. This hand still sucks. I would appreciate this hand starts sucking less. Okay, Sentry Flock for Felios turn three is not bad.
Are we forced to play a draw spell here? You can't play out Ophelios this turn. So just like eye and just smack him. Kind of stock. Because, like, he should have a relatively hard time dealing with my Twisted Fate. So, like, if I stick Twisted Fate and then I have the draw two after that, I'm in a pretty good spot. Only has two health. If he saves this for next turn, he has a Felios. And then what do we do? Not keeping Conservatory on one. Conservatory on one, I guess in this deck it matters less because, generally speaking, you have less plays to, like, you have less plays on turn one, but generally speaking, it's just it's just no tempo, and like you rarely need the countdown. Oh, interesting. What is this? I mean, I can just block that, right? I don't really care about that. He can't give it overwhelm, so I can just chump block it. Attack still sucks this turn. What am I leading up to? What am I leading up to here? Like, I want to get a TF down at some point. Seems like a rather peculiar Papercraft Dragon turn for him. Because, like, what? Hail Cascade? Hail Cascade's fine because he plays into a red card. I don't really care if he pales here. Uh, of course, I'm going to go for the block. Like, this, this was a little bit strange because he doesn't have a, like... That's that's a uh, red cardable. Hmm, I'm telling him I have a TF, which doesn't particularly matter. Alright, so what do I want to do with my mana here? I played zero? Jesus. So the reason to not play Raven Bloom this turn is if I want to TF lock that town. Which I'm not, because I need to save these for this, because I assume he has a Felios and can give this Overwhelm. So... I don't need to play out these cards yet, so I can play Ravenloom if I want. I'll Ravenloom soft pass, bait him into developing, and then I get a red card. I get a pop spell shield at least. I suspect him to have an Aphelios here. Which allows him to phase the Infernum that he wants. But I'll have to disintegrate for it. And then I have relatively good blockers. If he wants to develop Infernum into his turn, I also have stuns. So my goal here is just to try to flip the TF if I can. Which I should have relatively good means of doing so. And then I do like don't really want to... Ooh, interesting. No Aphelios? You really not have Aphelios? Maybe I should have moved in this turn. Like, I had pretty decent attacks across the board. Oh my god. He does have Aphelios. Oh, okay. I totally forgot that was a card. That's on me. I shouldn't be dying here, but... I forgot that was a card. If I, if I remembered he could Winding Light there, I would probably be a little bit more less passive with my turn.
Yeah, not the prettiest. Nothing could have been cleaner. Jeff's pretty far from leveling, which is a little bit awkward. So we go to two, this is four, this is six, this is eight. We're pretty close. Like, if we ever get a gold card, we just win anyways. That was probably kind of silly. But we, we could have done that turn better. Right now, I'm scared of a second Winding Light. I'm scared of an Aphelios. Killing the Owlcat here doesn't really do a lot. Uh, can I level TF? Uh, 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 six, nine, no. I already count, I can't. Um, hmm. This Fleeting Flock's a little bit awky. I can just shuffle it back. Is is Aki as well. I can't kill this because then he just puts on Fizz and that's a d d disaster. I don't want Death's Hand this either because then he could put on Fizz. We should be this game should be ours, but I think we kind of misplayed on the turn he played the winding light. Forgot that was a card that the stack run. Too much in the past where the winding light didn't exist. He played a level TF off in this deck or is he mostly support? He's mostly support. Like a red card with tie bulk just deals two to everything. In this matchup, however, he just has no removal for TF, and so I can play for level up. Like, he just can't kill my TF, and so like, if TF- I play TF, he's gonna level up eventually, unless my opponent lives or like kills me before I kill them. Like, either three things happen. I kill my opponent, my opponent kills me or TF levels, right? Unless he has like, double pokey stick. Whoa. That was interesting. I guess I do this now, right? Because he can't... Can he? He could develop next turn. <sighs> Useless. He has Paper Dragon. I think he just wants to go wide. Okay, by level. Oh, okay. Things. Oh, no, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 okay. That did level. Okay. Um, it's a Winding Light. Most likely. The, these Disintegrates are insane. Like, these Disintegrates are absolutely insane. Because the red card just wipes his board. Oh, no, the ore doesn't work like that. Hang on. Um, so I disintegrate here. Oh no, because the red card goes on stack at the very end, huh? Okay, so I need a red card first. Red card goes on the stack afterwards. I don't have the- okay. Ah, this is a little bit awky. Um, okay.
Doesn't work like that. This is still fine. I think this is this should allow me to live. And then it gives me a gold card potential. I think that's fine. Because like what could happen here is he like plays like a pale cascade onto this guy. And then I can disintegrate it. So I'm losing some draw, but should be fine. As long as we survive this turn, we should win. I don't think he can deal two damage without like getting punished by another disintegrate. Like say he pale cascades onto here, I can disintegrate this. He pale cascades here, he's not killing me. Um, so I think I should be fine here. He can't like give this overwhelm randomly. Giving this like spell shield doesn't really matter. Okay, we're fine here. We're chilling. Whew, that was kind of lucky. Got so much value all of a sudden. I don't perceive there to be a very easy way for him to deal two damage to us. Double pokey. Yeah, double pokey is like the only possibility. I'm gonna start like getting rid of his board if I want. I have plenty of value, I don't need any more draw. Yo, Roji, what's up, my dude? GG's earlier where you smacked me twice and I couldn't draw any removal, but thank you so much for the raid, man. Rock Emporium raid. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, I'm so bad at this game. Oh my god. I f <sighs> what's up, Roji? How you doing, man? I keep forgetting how like this ordering works. It's it's kind of screwed me over. I'm like this one didn't matter because I need the red card, but this one I totally forgot. Camo Dragon kind of broken. It is pretty good, but like I just didn't have any fearsome blockers in my deck. Like the only fearsome blocker I had was <laughs> Arachnoid Sentry. But it is a pretty sweet card. Definitely like underrating it, probably. The idea, yeah, just prey on people that don't have fearsome blockers. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good card though. Like a lot of, like the uh, Thresh Nasus had the problem where like, uh, it they just it, it they just had like what's it like no like big units. Like your whole board is just susceptible to cards like make it rain and red card but like the camo dragon just survives that I and mean, this is like everything your deck wants to be doing it's a cool concept or at least it's a cool like slot that i'm happy the deck like the card made into the deck okay we want to tibbers oh the tibber oh, oh check this out because because the red card goes on stack before the tibbers i can actually do this and it wipes his entire board right oh no it doesn't but it still stuns this Alternatively, I can just play Tie Bulk, but this is a full board clear. It's fine. We're chilling. Because mm. this, like, red cards, then it damages it. Not that it matters, because this is stunning it anyways. Mm. So I guess I should have targeted this? I don't know. This one's kind of tricky. I don't think it really mattered anyways, but... I'll probably save these just so I can red card next, or gold card if I need to. I don't want to get randomly cheesed either, because right now his hand's just too attached in it. Really close up the weakest part? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, take care, Roji. Thanks so much for the raid. Appreciate it. Toss CCG with fall as well. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yep. We're just going to save these so we can red card next turn. Or gold card, rather. I just don't want to get cheesed. But the only way I lose is to, like, a rainbow fish. Ooh, he's blocking. Beautiful. Because if he only has one unit, like gold card only has one target, and that's good. And if he plays Rainbow Fish this turn, it just dies because I can gold card it. Phenomenal. Okay. So if he has to develop this next one, I get a stun. And then I still have a gold card. So I think we shouldn't ever lose here. Flock is fantastic. Clock is absolutely fantastic. Alright, GG's. Mm, kind of a close one. We definitely like got a little bit closer comfort. Can I show you a deck? Mm, that depends. 
update is a little bit more of a serious climb stream. I'll be happy to take a look at it, but I don't think I'm going to get around to playing it. Uh, GG. GG. Hey, yo. Let's go. Like, maybe if you could choose, like, you could choose who you wanted to target instead. Oh, that sounds absurd as well. Mm. Let's hope Ty walk to five just to avoid the awkwardness. <laughs> Like, if you could, like, hypothetically choose who you want to target with, like, Rex. Maybe not, like, the big Rex, but, like, the small Rex. I think that could be, like, a very interesting buff. But again, that is probably just absurd. For free? Damn. It's really awkward. I don't want to take three damage here. House Spider me? Raven Bloom? Oh, I don't want to take five damage, Monka S. Hmm, can't really stop from taking five. Why salvage here? It's really awkward because I just didn't draw any units. Not that I have many units. I only have six units I could play this turn. Wow. And spells are kind of awkward here, anyways. I'm just gonna have to tank some damage. So if I'm taking damage, what's the best play? Do I salvage or do I just rave and bloom? Like, what's my next turn? Next turn's also awkward because, like, I don't want to let him just, like, echo me. I could, like, hold up. I'm probably zapping next turn. So this turn I can just toss a salvage. Losing Disintegrate. Okay, Sentry Flock next turn is nice as well. I don't want to open pass next turn either. Oh, this is so awkward. I could have blocked there. Whoopsies. Like, one extra damage. Okay. So what am I supposed to do here? I can't let him get Echo down for free. But I don't want to open pass either. Like, I get so screwed here if I don't hit a Blade's Edge off of this. And if I open a pass, I just take four extra damage again. So awkward. I guess I can play Raven Bloom because I have Sentry Flaw. So I can make something out of it. This is awkward. I just didn't draw House Spider. Okay, that can die though. And then we still have an answer for Echo next turn. Sort of. Not really. Not a clean one. Ooh. He hasn't predicted. I trade down now? No, because scrying so. Okay, flock. Beautiful. So I can TF plus flock. Then I might as well just red card. Alternatively, I can just gold card, and then that forces him to like have two predict. Which he most likely has, because otherwise you just don't play Echo like this. If you had like the landmark predict, you would just play it first. So like hypothetically, he has abilities to level up Echo right now. But I can just force them out right now, like if he has a Scrying Sand. Like if he has Scrying Sands, he needs a Scrying now, right? That's also fine. Okay. Uh, I, I would have rather re wanted to red card, but I think this gold card just like puts him in a really awkward spot. Don't you hold Echo until he's leveled? Well, he is leveling this turn. Like, he's only playing it this turn because he can level it. But now I got him to pre-commit a Scrying Sands. Um, because he's forced to level it right now. And then getting 
Tibbers is so crazy. Like, Tibbers is so phenomenal here. We're still taking a good amount of damage, but... I think we're kind of chilling. Take four. Health is a resource, right, guys? Health is a resource. I want to start trading down the board as well. it okay this is fine because things are damaged so like tibbers gets to clean up pretty nicely drop board can kill tia what do you mean what do you mean by that a meme anymore oh no it's for sure a meme but it's funny it's funny that people are now taking it seriously it's really funny i find it absolutely funny that people are taking it seriously it's hilarious to me my twisted fate oh no can i kill this tf twice or this echo twice no I'll just wait until I can kill Echo twice, and if he chrono breaks, I can just kill it twice. We are dozens. Yeah, there's at least 12 people out there that want drop order nerf. Feel free to count me in as well. Hmm. <laughs> It'd be really funny if they nerfed drop order for like no apparent reason. I would find it spectacularly hilarious though. So right now we're just forcing him to chrono break, but we can just like kill another echo anyways. Oh, interesting. I'm playing my Annie, huh? I have another Annie. Time trick. So it doesn't even have chrono break in hand. So I need to play Tie Bulk in order to kill uh So I need to play Tie Bulk here in order to death's hand to kill uh Echo. If he has Chrono Break, he also needs Chrono Break now to get Ezreal back. Or not Ezreal. So if he doesn't have it here, then I just presume he doesn't have it. Like there's no way he would like have the Chrono Break here but not play it, right? In which case I might just pass. It's so weird. Like, if he chrono breaks, I don't even care if he chrono breaks, because I still just kill Echo, right? There's a world where it does matter, but... I, I think this is too juicy to pass up. Like, I don't care if he brings back these 1-3s and 2-3s. Okay, so now if he brings back Echo, it just dies anyway, so I don't care. Yep, we're looking good. Like, I don't even care if he chrono breaks here. It's just not good enough. And if he doesn't block here, we just know he doesn't have it. Right, he might have it, but it just doesn't matter because of Dead Sand. Uh, if they buffed it at zero mana. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I'm to the nerf it bandwagon, eh? Oh, he didn't hit it. That's so sad. Oh, man. 
It will not change anything. No, it would make it super insane. Imagine you just play against aggro and you just top deck instead. And you just spew out 1-3s for 0 mana. You probably wouldn't play in an aggro deck because it's a 1-3. But like, whew, that'd be crazy. Like you just play a free 1-3 against an aggro deck and they just like almost lose on the spot. It's kind of, it's just, it's almost that insane. Okay, so I don't want like this to be like, Hex side. All right, we got there. Three, four stats is broken. <laughs> Thrash Callisto through Kindlers. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Tiana is like, like the it. It's always been like this either like the Tiana or like the Rekindler kind of like infinite Callisto loop thing. It, in theory, it's cool and all. In practice, it's just not really the sauce, unfortunately. The sounds okay. This curves up is fine, I guess. The singer is also okay. Honestly, I'd probably like ditch zap to try to look for like a like a um. I'd probably rather want to look for like a. Odd oh, words are so tough. A uh sentry. I don't think I really care about Sedwani. The only thing I care about here is is the two damage. I, I would care if like he could flip Gnar, but obviously that's not the case. So I'd rather just like save these for when Annie can see them or use them in conjunction to take care of something else. Cause like I can red card this, I can make it rain this, I can block it with what the frick? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <clears throat> hey oh TF. Chief Nakatak. There's no way he has an attack here, right? <laughs> These are all kind of annoying. Is transform deck? Yeah, yeah, sort of. It's like a, it's like the uh, Nar Sej deck, but with some transform stuff. It's kind of cute. So my issue next turn is he like plays Nar. And both these transform, and that's like a little bit dangerous. Um, I don't like press him a little bit. Okay, beautiful. Those are probably the best hits, apart from like damaging this. Unfortunately, I don't really have an attack here. I would lose my Annie if I attack like this. I have the dead hand potentially, and then he can't play Gnar if he like troll chants me. I'm not super happy about that decision, but. And then I should attack with the spider. This was kind of silly. Like, if I was attacking with Annie, I should attack with spider. I kind of like represent like a disintegrate. Um, so he's not really able to block the knock attack. I and mean, if he wants to protect the knock attack against something like dead hand, he like can't play Gnar, which is something he wants to be doing here. Or at least, like, I presume he wants to be playing Gnar. Because, like, he had the, the the mine thingy go off. And so his Gnar is leveling if he has it. Okay, so he has Gnar here. Um, and we can kill Gnar. Huh? Really? <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. We just top deck a flock. And then he still can't play Gnar. Flock, 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 flock. Damn. I knew it. We'll just. Oh man. I knew he had a Gnar as well. Ugh. 
was just really hoping I'd drop like a flock there. That was kind of unfortunate. Damn. That stunk. So Noctok and Gnar is like a pretty big deal. Ooh, disintegrate. Disintegrate, baby. It's really good. Would I rather Death's Hand or make it rain? I think Make It Rain gets better value if I like play it after the tie and and Death's Hand is probably a little bit less. Unsure about that, because later on if I like need a YOLO Make It Rain with like a Disintegrate, I can put myself in a bad spot. This is maybe questionable, but I have another Zap, I have TF, I should be able to find what I need. And that open attack was really poor from him. Sack and knock attack, okay. Bit Seed Lizard, y'all. So now, like, he hasn't, like, I, I want to get, I can full swing here because of Tibbers. And, like, if he wants to block with these guys, they're all going to die to Tibbers, which is, like, really, really insane. Like, these are just being set up for Tibbers. Also, like, setting up a red card potentially as well. So the only thing we're scared of right now is Sejuani, but he's kind of taking the beat down as well, down to 6 health with no healing. Man, it's Shaman! Oh my lord. Okay, we uh... I mean, we just red card here, and then we set up Tibbers next turn. Because he's forced to open attack, otherwise the whole board dies with Tibbers. Alright, we're chill, we're chill. God, this deck is so spicy. <laughs> Looks kind of cute. A little bit too cute against this kind of deck, but it's kind of cool. I dare you to Sejuani me right now. I dare you. Double dog dare you. He gets so farmed if he Sejuani's my TF right now. So I just stun the Sej and I kill the rest of his board. And it'll be lights out. Tibbers is actually really sweet. Like, make it rain and red card with Tibbers is so insanely powerful because you can just set up board states like this, where he's like, if I don't take this attack now, I just get farmed, right? But if I develop, I also get farmed. Just not, not much win-win. <laughs> not, not much. Oh my god, the farming is so brutal. Look at that. Wait, what? Huh? Am I dumb? Wait. Oh, it only deals two because because I haven't played Tyvul. Oh, no. Oh, mm, uh oh. Uh, well, he gets a Mammoth Shaman level up, I guess. I forgot this. I thought it dealt three just because <laughs> just because I'm like, I'm so used to playing it after Tyvul. Oh, well, it's fine. We're chilling. Speaking of the devil, is that good? <laughs> Blades Edge, one damage. Okay, um, we're one card draw off of leveling TF. It means like I have a troll chant here in order to like survive. Okay. And then I just need one more damage anyways. Because like he, his deck has no healing and has no denies. So I just need to find one more blade's edge, one more death's hand, just one more anything. And it should be unlikely for him to actually kill me, simply because um, I could find like Disintegrator Flock. Beautiful. I'm going to play Annie here, just in case I top deck another Annie. It turns into a... Alternatively, I can just kill the Mammoth Shaman here. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Few choices here. I could kill Mammoth Shaman, 
which means I just never die. Or I play Annie and then I can top deck like a I could I could like top deck another Annie and it turns into a disintegrate, which is also really good. Although I think if I take this line, I just can't lose. Cause like the way I'm winning, I'm gonna win through the next attack. And so like using the blades edge to deal with a unit wasn't necessarily that bad for us anyways. And if you can't kill my TF, I'm just gonna flip that as well. Is it gonna battle fury me? I wonder. It's only one any left. That's fair. Battle fury. Ooh, fear of the north. Okay. Uh, we will draw some cards. See what we hit. Okay. Well, that's fine. We level TF and then we win anyways. You need that. Uh, what is my next turn? I can probably just do you for now. Oh, we can just flock the Sejuani. We can also just flock you. Hmm, I wonder if we should have flocked Sejuani. This is round start. So this level Sejuani. Although I don't perceive that to be that big of a deal. So Raven Bloom is one. Can't kill my TF, so I might as well just like pick a card here. So I pick a card, it's a blue card, and then I will Raven Bloom red. Oh no, I want to Raven Bloom with the Tybalt. Because I'll do two damage. So I'll play this first to blue, and I'll play Tybalt to red, and then I'll deal two. Make your rain is fantastic as well. Yep, now this makes my red card deal 2 damage and that's lethal. But even if he like could stop my board, this red card just deals steal. <laughs> that one's interesting. <laughs> Taylor, what's up buddy? Thank you for follow. Appreciate it. List the control, huh? That has perked my attention. I think that's hand to kill Annie is too expensive. We have a token, which is really good because we get an Annie first. Annie first is just nice, really nice. Diego Callista. Could be. What's the second champion? Is it Froyard? Callista Udyr Control? Oh man. That sounds hot as hell. Hot, 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 hot. It's really hot. Hot and spicy. How spider? Callista Udir, huh? Interesting. I guess that is SI Frel, anyways. Callista with the region stands with a 3 6 fearsome region. That does sound kind of hot. So he does this because he likely has a red card so i wouldn't want to attack with this i would I, I would love to attack with this if i had a tf of my own so i could counter represent so i don't want to leave him with a two on either but if he red cards me the following turn i'd rather have attack the other setup is like what there's no way he's gonna flock my annie right he flocks and then leaves that i think i'm pretty happy because like he also has to be wary of like red card Okay, never mind. He just like. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I was like, he was like, red card just doesn't exist, and he just makes this YOLO block anyway. I think this block is still kind of sketchy against the red card. I don't know, man. I still think that block is kind of suspect. Ugh. I don't want to pass here. I don't want to play into like a sentry either. If I play this and he sentries me, I'm so far behind. Okay, this is fine. This is beautiful. 
this is the best case scenario that you just open attacks i think if iron his spot i would have just passed there but luckily he did not pass back and i gotta at least get this off like this is pretty good for us that he attacked otherwise i'd be in a pretty awkward spot yeah beautiful you have a deck to view all right bet i'll be waiting we're good we're ahead in cards we are pretty good and we're ahead in mana like we can start taking these passes it's kind of hard for him to develop and it's like a red card oh beautiful okay so he's gonna blue card here this is this mirror yes this is a mirror i'm just gonna red card and set these guys to blade's edge health I could alternatively gold card, but I don't think that's nearly as effective. This also sets it up nicely for like a make it rain or like a second TF. Unfortunately, I don't have either, but for now, at least I have the blades that just fall up and to steal two damage. Nice. And he burns a mana. Everything's looking up right now. Try any of our own. Try to flip her ourselves. I have the Naga Boros. Yep. Ah, sure, why not? Mm. Oh my god. I would have liked to, like, have the anti down before I commit these. But I think I'd rather save 4 health and have 2 extra progress on Annie. Would you ever run Rex in the sec after the buff? I think after having played a couple games, my answer would be no. Rex is just a little bit too slow and it's really hard to weave in. Like, it's already very awkward for me to even, like, play out, like, high bulk and tibbers. Unless, like, they're on curve. Oh my god. Like, Rex is really awkward just because it's 8 mana. And it doesn't really get very good until after you play Ravenbloom. Potentially leveling TF here. Holy moly. Okay, fair enough. Alright, so that's going to be it for the games. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to try out the deck for yourselves, I will include the deck list down below in the description as usual. But thank you again for making it all the way to the end. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, but I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. So peace out, guys, and take care.